Hey there, welcome back guys. In this video, we're gonna show you how to change the color from the CFS system inside of your Creality Slicer. So if you got your Creality Slicer, and let's say we'll have a look right here at this project, and we have yellow, white, red, but those aren't my colors. These are the colors inside of my CFS system, all right? So we have the EXT is the extruder, and the other one is the CFS one unit. As you can see, these are my colors there. I have like a, a, a greenish, a blue, yellow, and then a multicolor and gray. But I opened up this project and what do I do? So what you can do is this, as you can see, when I click it, it automatically corresponds over here to which one I clicked on. See, I clicked on yellow, clicked on red, see, number two. And I can switch it, but I can't switch it from there. And see here, I clicked on the white and the white brought us to number three third object. Now, sometimes um, it's not all going to be on the same build plate. Sometimes you'll have three different build plates, but it's the same process. See, I clicked on the white, but I don't have white. And again, my colors are up here. So knowing that moving forward, it can select the object of desire, right? And then right here, select the, uh, that's uh, color number three. So we're gonna make color number three gray, okay? And it, it could go in any order because these are just what's on the plate. So I'm going to select the eyedropper in case you're wondering what I just did. Uh, I'm gonna close everything again. I just went there, see? Clicked on the CFS and then select the eyedropper. And then when I go to the eyedropper, I go to my colors, okay? Knowing that I'm moving forward. See, the eyedropper appeared. And you just wanna make sure you hover over your gray. And as soon as you close it, see, voila, your color is there. And for the red, I don't have red, as you can see, but by default, these are the colors that open because this is the STL file. Okay, knowing that and moving forward, what we'll do is I click on the red and maybe I want that to be yellow. So I go to the eyedropper and I select from my color yellow, see that? And if I close it, it's not gonna it's not gonna post until it's closed. See, and there's yellow. And if I go here to the gray, I do have gray, but I want that to be a different color. So most likely, again, we select the uh, my I believe this is gray because this is number one, right? And we'll do make that one this color right there. See, and when I close it, then it'll post. Okay. And this one should be number three. Yeah, that's my other color. And again, the same thing happens when you're on a, uh, uh, a plate that has everything on one. See, same thing, similar concept, but everything's on one plate. Sometimes you'll get an STL file like this. So that same thing, we double tap or just tap it to activate it. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go here over to uh, wherever the yellow is there. And I wanna swap it and I'm going to make that gray. So use the eyedropper, right? And then go here and then close it. And then the red, I do not have red for sure. So just highlight it. And then I'm gonna make that yellow. Okay, so too bad you just can't tap it. You would think we'll just tap it. You can't see I'm tapping it. Um, so you, again, you go on the red, use the eyedropper and select my color, which will be yellow, okay? And then this one, I do not have white. I do have white, but it's on a different um, a machine. I think my kids have it for their printer. Um, but again, I'm going to make that this color. So we're gonna double tap or just tap one, sorry. And then go here and use the eyedropper for that color. And now I have all my colors, see? And then when I select it, that's number three. The only thing, the only problem with this um, is that you're either gonna have to do a pause print or it's gonna take forever because it's gonna do so many color changes. So if you can separate this and put this on a different board, uh, great, Other than otherwise it's gonna take forever. Um, so you know, try to find the file that actually has the multiple build plates so that you'll print that first, then you'll print this, and then you'll print that. Uh, knowing that moving forward, um, but what if, I wanted, what if I ran out of this color? How do I change it? Well, very easily, you go to device and then we go uh, here, click on details. Uh, so remember, the, the first color is your extruder. I, I can't recall the last time I used it because ever since I got the CFS unit, uh, I've been doing it from there. And then everything else uh, is inside the CFS, okay? Creality uh, uh, filament system, all right? Um, 
so as you see, I have that color. But what if I swapped it? What if the gr this turquoise color was the gray and the gray was there? Very easily. You go here and then go here. Uh, and then let's say I, I made that gray, right? Click OK. And then click OK again. Now it's there. Now if I go back to prepare, as you can see, it just changed up there. Now I have gray, gray. And then now this is going to be the other color. Okay, so then you go back into the device again, and we go here, the last one, and then we go here, and then we're going to go, where are we going to go? Ah, oh, that's the color right there, and then click OK, and OK, and as you can see, this is the order that the colors are in, uh, and if I go to prepare, now it's there. Uh, it's back to what it actually was before, but it doesn't correspond that way inside of the um, CFS unit. So come, I'll show you, let you have a look to see what's actually happening inside. So as you can see here, um, these are the colors I have. Like, see, we have the gray over here and then this is over there inside of there. So this does not match what's happening inside of um, the, um, the slicer. So you want it to match what's inside or inside the slicer. Otherwise, when you print, it's not going to. See, look, this color, that color, that color, and that color. So what we could do is to have it match and correspond to what's happening inside of the uh, slicer. So now I have to bring this there and that there. So now what I'll do is you just um, push this in and your filament will pop out. And then you'll put this like this. Um, so that it doesn't tangle up and go crazy. You can put this on the bed, it's fine. And then what we'll do is we'll push this in, oops, and pull it out. And then we'll put this one here, see? And then just put it on this little thing. It should self-feed actually, see? And then wait, let it work its magic before putting the other one in. Um, into the feeder and it's gonna work its magic from there whoops no that's why you want to put it through the hole otherwise you can lose all your filament but if we look here look see it's just feeding all the way through um, and then so now it's gonna do the same thing with the gray but I want to okay so that one's done no error no red light and then now we're gonna put this one in like this. Just let it, it'll feed. You just have to push the tab when um, ex, ex, taking it out. So it's gonna do the same thing again. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, but it looks like it's gonna feed through. See, it's going through there. It just went in halfway. It's going in, going in. Sometimes, like I said, it doesn't do it all the way like it did the other one, but that's okay. It's just working magic. It seems to do that. As long as you don't get any red lights, you're golden. Let's, let's just let it work its magic. It's just going in, going out, going in, going out. And it looks like it worked its magic. And the other thing you could do is, let's say um, you have your filament in order here now it matches, and now it matches inside of the computer. But let's say um, I'm gonna print something, right? If I go back, I don't know. Oh, let's say I wanna print this or anything else. Let's say I wanna print that little thingy. Uh, and if I click next, it's set to print in gray, but I can choose to change the color for me. I want it to be yellow. See, one, two, three, four. One, whoops, we have one, whoops two, three, four. So that's what that corresponds to there. So I can change the color. So you see now it's going to be yellow instead of gray. And then I press print and then that'll work its magic from there. So you're not, it's not set in stone. You can always go back and change the color from here or, or just cancel the print and do it from there. But you know, vice versa, you're not tied to the colors and even does that for the multicolor prints too. Uh, if you have, you know, a multicolor print happening, um, you would, let's see if I have, I don't do many multicolor prints because they take forever. Um, ah, this one was multicolor, I believe. Yeah. So if I go next, see, I can change all the colors that I want that to be in. So as you can see, 
just select them from there. But again, multicolor prints take a long time. So I usually print them all on separate plates. Um, you know, it's just faster that way. And now we'll go back. And that's pretty much it. Kind of neat, huh? So you can switch the colors from here uh, any way you choose. And you can switch the colors from there any way you choose, as long as they correspond and match according to what's up here. Remember, this is the extruder. This is the, um, and the CFS system. And as you can see, I don't, once you have a CFS system, I, I really don't see the extruder being used again, unless you have another printer and that, you know, without the CFS unit, which is the Crowley um, filament system, um, it's just going to do one color at a time. Anyway, that's pretty much it. I hope this video helped you. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them down below or ideas for other videos. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.